What's up everybody and thanks for watching my third Bella Books video. So in our previous video in the comments, someone left a request for me to do a Harry Potter book review. But since it's a quite magical, amazing, best-selling book series, I decided I couldn't just come at it with any ordinary book review. So I decided that I'm going to do my first ever book versus movie. I'm Hermione Granger, and you are. Sorry, that's so bad. We all know that books have loads of detail that movies just don't have the time to include. As a result, today I will be discussing my top five mind-blowing details in the books that did not make it into the movies. Spoiler alert! If you have not read the books or seen the movies, stop it, honey. Number one, a pack of anime guy. In the movie, we have a basic understanding of Sirius Black, Remus Lupin, Peter Pettigrew, and James Potter. The four men were best friends as children. The movie tells us that Peter Pettigrew is able to turn into Ron's pet rat Scabbers, and Sirius Black is able to turn into a dog. We also know that Remus Lupin is a very dangerous werewolf. We also see that the two twins, Fred and George Weasley, give Harry Potter the Marauder's Map. However, we don't know much about it, except that it was created by four mysterious people with the names of Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs. Here's the detail that I love that the book has that the movie just doesn't. The movie tells us that they were childhood friends, but the book goes into much more detail. When a werewolf bites a human, it can turn the human into a werewolf. But, when a werewolf bites an animal, the animal does not transform into a werewolf. Knowing this, Black, Potter, and Pettigrew knew that they would need to become unregistered animangi in order to protect Lupin on the full moon nights when he transformed into a werewolf. James Potter being a stag, Sirius Black being a dog, and Peter Pettigrew being a rat. You see what I did there? The four decided that they were going to create the Marauder's Map. Being mischievous boys, because creating this map was such a dangerous business and a huge no-no at Hogwarts, they had to keep their identity secret. So they put their names as Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs. Lupin being Mooney, Pettigrew being Wormtail, Sirius Black being Padfoot, and James Potter being Prongs. If you remember in the movie, Harry Potter had the Patronus of a stag. That was because his father, James Potter, had the anime guy animal of a stag. Did you get all that? Number two, the real prophecy. The only thing we know about the prophecy about the Chosen One to kill Voldemort is that the Chosen One is Harry Potter. Now here's a ton of information about the prophecy that the book has and the movie does not. Neville Longbottom and Harry Potter both fit the prophecy. They both have parents in the Order of the Phoenix. They both had parents that narrowly escaped from Voldemort three times, and they both were born on the end of July. Did you know that Neville Longbottom was actually a pureblood? I know, it seems kind of unlikely, right? When Voldemort heard of the prophecy, he set off to kill one of the children. But the reason he went after Harry instead of Neville was because Harry was a half-blood, and Voldemort himself was a half-blood. Because Voldemort was so dangerous, he saw more power in Harry than in Neville. Number three, the story of Voldemort. This is where the real drama begins. In the movie, we know that Voldemort is a half-blood, and he was named after his father, which is weird because he hates his father, and he is an evil, snake-like jerk. But here's the incredible backstory that the book has about Voldemort. Voldemort's mother, Merope Gaunt, was a witch, and one of the very last descendants of the Slytherin family. After an unfortunate life full of abuse, she runs away from home taking the Slytherin ring with her, which Voldemort eventually uses as one of his seven horcruxes to divide up his soul. Voldemort's father was a muggle named Tom Riddle. He was also a neighbor to Moreau Gaunt. One day she fed him a love potion, and eventually they got married and she was pregnant. Hoping that Tom would still love her, she lifted the charm off of him. Instead, he got angry and abandoned. After being left alone, Merope unfortunately became very ill. Knowing that she probably did not have very much longer to live, she went to an orphanage where she had her son, requesting the name Tom Marvolo Riddle. Tom Riddle because her husband was Tom Riddle, and Marvolo because her father was Marvolo Gaunt. After she gave birth to him, she tragically died, leaving him alone. Number four, an unexpected relationship. Ooh. Dumbledore was the eldest child of his family and mostly in charge of taking care of his sister, Ariana. 
One day, a boy named Grindelwald moved next door to Dumbledore in a place named Godric's Hollow. Seeing Grindelwald as an equal, Dumbledore decided to befriend him. They became very obsessed with the Deathly Hollows. They created a long-winded plan for power, but after Dumbledore's mother passed away, he saw how dumb his plan was and confronted Grindelwald about it. Grindelwald was very angered by Dumbledore's decision and they got into the famous duel. But sadly, Dumbledore's younger sister Ariana got caught in the middle of the duel and died. Dumbledore won the fight, but he was left with only his brother to look after, and a very powerful enemy. Number five, St. Mungo's Hospital. In the Harry Potter movies, we actually don't know much about Neville Longbottom. All we know is that he is cared for by his grandmother, and we are led to believe that his parents are dead. But in the book, we are told that Neville's parents are not at all dead, and only permanent residents at St. Mungo's Hospital due to permanent brain damage from the Cruciatus Curse, compliments of Voldemort. There's a chapter in one of the Harry Potter books where we see Harry, Hermione, and Ron all with Miss Weasley at St. Mungo's to visit Arthur Weasley. While they are there, they see Neville with his grandmother and discover that he is actually there visiting his parents, which means they are indeed not dead at all. They have a conversation with him and realize how hard of a time he's having. Now, while this detail was not critical in any way and the movie did not suffer without it, I still would have enjoyed to see it in the movie because the way that it showed character depth and emotion just really touched my heart. And that's how I see it. If you see something differently or you think I left out anything, be sure to comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and click the bell. Sonic Thank you for watching. Bye!